Hello, today I'm going to explain how to use a specific subsets to change the scope of the mathematical program and facilitate us how to solve a specific data set. For that, uh, I'll explain the following thing and then we will go to, to lines. Typically, when we have data, we have that data contained into identifiers referring to sets, so we have typically global sets containing all the elements that may intervene in, in, in a model. For example, in a distribution program, we may have uh, plants and customers, we meet demands of customers from our plants, and we may have to set those plants containing all the plants in, in, the, in the system, and all the customers may be contained as well in, in a set, which is as customers. And we may want to have specific sets which contain specific elements of the previous sets. So we may have in our model two, two sets which are S plants to solve and S customers to solve, where these two sets contain elements from the previous set, but only a subset, a, 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 a set of particular elements, which are those that will intervene in our uh, mathematical program that we may want to restrict for some reason. So let's go to aims. And here we have a project corresponding to the problem within the tutorial for beginners, which you can download from the AIMS website. And first we have a declaration for input data, and we have as customers and as plants. If we go to check our data, we have a large data of customers, and all I think it's 145. And if we go, if we go to as plants, we have as well a set of a, a plants or, or distribution centers from which we, we meet our customers' demands. Okay, and we also have indices which are as I customer and I plan corresponding to each of these sets, and we have identifiers for the supply from each plant. Okay, and it runs on the on the index I plant. We have the data for that. Okay, these values. We have the demand, which is a parameter with the demand for each customer, and we have this large set of values which customer has its own demand, and we have finally a parameter which is the unitary transportation cost in between uh, any two locations where the, the origin is a plant and the destination is a customer. I plan that our customer are, are the indices over which this parameter runs. Okay, we might create a, a mathematical program with the constraints and variables running on this sub, uh, set of sets, but we might want for some reason to just use some customers and some plants to, to solve a, a, a smaller model. So we have a declaration here, which I've called the main model, and we have a mathematical program which tries to minimize a variable, which is the total cost, we, we will see later. And we have two subsets, as we said before. S customers to solve. So this is a subset of S customers, okay? And it has a specific index, I customer to S. So when I refer anything to I customer to S, it will only refer to the data contained or the elements contained in this set. So we go to the data page of this element and we see that we have in this area all the customers that are contained in the S customers. And to our left, we have all of these that are actually contained in the set as customers to solve. So let's just pick a set of customers like this one, this one, this one. And okay, this is enough. We may want to run. A, a, a mathematical program with only this uh, six customers project and same thing we go to s plants to solve and we have cust this is subset of s plants and it has a specific specific uh, index which is i plant to solve or i plant to s so that any in a, a parameter or variable referring to this index will only refer to the elements contained in this set so we go to the data page we have all the subsets, all the elements in, in the, the S plan subset, and we're going to pick a couple of, of or three plans, which will be those available for us to meet the demands of our customers to close. Okay, and we have the variable V transport plan, transport which runs on I plan 2S and I customer 2S, so that we only have to find this variable for those elements contained in the above a, a set. So we don't have variables for those elements, or those plants, which are not within the, 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 the selected plants for, for us to, to solve. And we have three constraints. First, we have the supply, 
it runs on every plant so for so for iPlant 2s we have to info that we do not provide more product from every of these plants from each of these plants to the customer selected for for, for, for attend for, for being attended with this plant same thing with demands we have a constraint for every element in, in, in our subset containing the customers to solve that's why we have this i custom to solve and we have the expression or the definition of these constraints running on only i plan to solve and as i customer to solve okay and finally we have the final cost constraint the total cost where we have explicitly defined that the total cost is the summation of all the unitary transportation costs multiplied by the amount of product that we're transporting from any plant to any customer within the subsets of, of the elements to, to, to be incorporated in our mathematical program. So we're going to run our main execution where we are going to show the progress window and then we're going to solve the mathematical problem. So we run this pro this mathematical program, this procedure, sorry, and we can check now the data we have for our decision variable. So what we have here is only two rows corresponding to the three plants that we are allowed to intervene within the mathematical program and six columns each corresponding to a customer. Okay, So that's something which uh, allows us to solve only for these subsets. We're going to do some final thing. I'm, I'm going to create a, a, a page that's created. In this case I already created it. It is page solve. Okay, and I'm going to define, let's go to the um, design mode and I'm going to create one of these selection elements. Okay, and I'm going to tell it that I want a checkbox of a set and in particular I want the customers to solve. Okay, I end it. Okay, and same thing. I want another of these elements, okay, and I want the checkbox of the expands to solve, okay, great. So I'm, I'm going to do this, which I actually don't need that much, but I think it's always nice to have a button to click on, so and I'm going to associate an action which is a procedure in this case is our main execution ok, or by accept and go to user mode again so in this case now we can toggle on and off elements and solve we can actually easily we can go now and check that now ok, we have different values because we have more customers now we can actually do something we can replicate this I'm going to just copy this table and I'm going to move it to our to solve page this is not very nice we could arrange it later and I'm going to go to okay great so we now have again this is not very nice okay but we can see now that when we solve with different elements within our elements we have different values for our elements in, in this table table so back to our presentation this allows us to manage a in, in, in an efficient manner our data which can be used for debugging Sometimes we may not want to use the whole data set because it's too large and we don't identify the, the, the we don't make sense of the value that comes out of the model. We want to work with only a couple of elements or a small reduced number of elements to, to make sure that the model is doing what we want it to do. Or we can also be interested in breaking down the problem into smaller ones. For example, imagine in the case of, of, of the distribution problem, we may want uh, to use a clustering approach so that we if we have large number of customers and plants we may cluster customers and plants so that first we select one cluster which is a set of customers and, 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 and plants which are close to each other and 
we select one cluster we fill in the, the subsets as customers to solve and as funds to solve and solve that set problem we store the solution somewhere in a, in, in a specific identity files and we do this over and over again until no clusters are left and then of course we need to make sense of the whole set of, of, of the individual uh, uh, information we have gathered from, from this uh, clustering approach but this way we may end up being able to address in, not in, 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 a, in a effective at least manner something which is too large to, to solve in a, in a single mathematical problem and uh, this provides us with some advantages it is very easy to change the model scope in terms of what owners intervene it's very easy to, to manage the, the cases in names with this uh, tip because we can have a large case with all the elements and we just toggle in and, and on and off the elements which may define which ones we want to intervene and additionally we can uncouple two different things which are the input data which may be provided by the customer or the one we're providing work to and the relevant data for a particular model which is a, a decision okay so i hope this is useful and we can we can make use of it in future models that we you will develop in names bye bye